I now would like to introduce the next speaker, uh, Mr. Simon Hay. He's the managing director of Leo Lithium Limited. Mr. Hay joined Leo Lithium as managing director and CEO in January 2022. Prior to joining Leo Lithium, Mr. Hay was a chief executive officer of an ASX um, listed lithium company, Galaxy Resources. The culmination of his role as CEO was the five billion measure of equals with uh, Orocoba to create the world's fifth uh, largest lithium producer, Alchem, in mid-2021. Mr. Hay has been an astute, uh, has an astute knowledge of the lithium market and is well regarded in the capital markets for having created value at Galaxy. He's also a non-executive chairman of Battery Future Acquisition Corporation, a special purpose corporation which listed in the New York Stock Exchange in December 2021. Uh, battery Future will seek a uh, combination with uh, bus business in the battery metals and um, metals value chain. Mr. Hay holds a Bachelor of Science uh, with honors in chemistry and a Master's of Applied Science in Metallurgy from the University of uh, Melbourne. Uh, I would now like to uh, welcome Tim to take the stage. Can we make him feel welcome? Thanks, Wamu, and um, well done to Paydirt, Bill, and the Dom and Dom and the team for uh, putting together another great uh, ADU. So, firstly, our uh, disclaimer slide on forward-looking statements. So, today I'll take you through the uh, Leo Lithium and the Gulamina Lithium project, which is a really compelling in investment. We're one of the largest spodge moon projects in the world. We're fifth largest hard rock lithium project with over 200 million tonnes of resource. We have fantastic uh, financial metrics with an MPV of uh, 2.9 billion US and this was calculated at very conservative lithium prices. And also we have a great uh, uh, JV partner in Gang Feng and we're very well funded So Leo Lithium was formed a bit over a year ago. We've been uh, listed on the ASX since uh, June of 2022. Um, and in our first year, highlights have included raising uh, funds on a number of occasions to fund Gulamina. So we had the IPO where we raised $100 million. We've also had subsequent investments from Gang Feng, our JV partner, into the project. I'll also take you through today what we've done with the resource, where we've uh, effectively doubled the resource uh, since listing. And we've also commenced construction of the project and we're very well advanced. We've grown the project from a workforce at the start of last year of around 30 or so in both Mali and in Perth to now well over 1,200 people um, in Mali and about 25 in our, in our Perth office. Um, Construction's well underway, as is mining. Um, we've got, uh, we've uh, awarded the contract to Corica. Um, great to see Corica in the audience here today, uh, Abdullah. Um, and it's, uh, we're very proud to have an announced our mining contract. It's a, Malian, a contract with Malian source um, and over 500 million US dollars, uh, sorry, Australian dollars in value. And sorry, just going back, uh, we, the project is located in the southwest of Mali, close to the border with Guinea, and we'll be uh, trucking at the start most of our product out through um, uh, Cote d'Ivoire. Onto the resource, and you can see a typical cross-section here where we have really thick pegmatites, um, shallow, near surface, and we've got an open cup uh, mine planned and, and underway. Over the course of this year, we've increased the resource firstly by 48% um, in June 2023 and then 
uh, with a further resource upgrade in June of this year, we took the resource uh, up to 211 million tonnes. So really world scale. Um, it's high grade as well, our grade of 1.5% in contrast to some of the Australian producers here in WA um, have resources of 1.1% to 1.3%. To our life of mine strip ratio is 3.8%. Um, many of the deposits here in WA which are being developed or uh, mooted to be developed in, in the future have um, strip ratios of 10 to 20. Um, so ours is very competitive on that uh, metric. Our thick intercepts, you can see here, some of the pegmatite intercepts we've encountered are up to 100 metres thick. Again, comparing to local um, projects, some of them have um, in, uh, pegmatite intercepts of one to five metres in, in thickness, really showing, again, the a real competitive advantage that the Gulamina deposit has um, on, on a world scale. What's coming up in regard to our resource and reserve? Well, we've completed all the drilling in our current program and the final drill results will come out uh, later this year. Um, on the reserve, after upgrading the resource earlier this year, we're now moving on to upgrade the reserve. Uh, that work is well advanced and we expect to uh, announce the reserve um, towards the end of this month. Um, what we're doing right at the moment, the final pit design has been completed, uh, but we're now just fine-tuning the scheduling, the ramps, the cutback designs to come up with the final reserve. And with the resource growing and the reserve expected to grow significantly, what does that mean for the project? Well, it means we can grow um, stage one and, and move into stage two and potentially a stage three. We had long mooted a stage two of around 330,000 tonne per annum, but we're going to move that towards uh, 500,000 tonne per annum. And also we'll now consider... The, uh, the ability of the resource to support a stage three. Um, so that work will start later this year, move into next year, and we'll see whether we can, um, we can grow the project further beyond the one million tonne per annum that stage one plus stage two would deliver. So a lot of really exciting times coming up on the, the resource side of things. On the ground, what's happening? So you can see here some construction photos showing that the plant is, is well advanced. We're approximately a third complete on construction um, and mining is well underway. Um, as I said before, Corica have been appointed as our mining services contractor and mining has started. We're building, uh, we've got the first starter pit underway. We are producing ore and we've started to stockpile some of the waste materials. Um, at site. In regard to our schedule, the construction phase is we're now in the very, very busy period with multiple different contractors on site. Um, over the next few months we'll really break the back of the, of the construction. We expect to complete construction around about the end of the first quarter next year. Further uh, photographs of what's happening on site, you can see here um, pretty clearly, I think. Uh, we've got the TSF in the top left-hand corner, so the embankment is uh, nearly at the final height. We have um, the 450-tonne crane in position to lift the bore mill. Um, that, that will be coming up over the next quarter. Um, you can see our final accommodation plant, uh, accommodation units and mess being installed. Um, we've got our temporary uh, accommodation facilities well in place already. We've got, we're about 25 kilometres away from our uh, freshwater source, um, the Salinge Dam. We've started the installation of the water pipe work. So this will again be completed uh, just uh, early next year. There's been a lot of development uh, recently in our engagement with the Mali government, so I'll bring you up to speed on what, what has happened uh, over the last few months. So in July we received some correspondence from the government, um, which led to uh, the stopping of our DSO plans. Uh, we also talked, uh, the, the correspondence referred to our free carry stake, where the government moves from 
uh, a current 0% uh, involvement up to a potential 20% involvement. And they also requested some Im information on, on the project. So since then, Leo Lithium and Gang Feng, our JV partner, have engaged with the government and we've advanced uh, on all these matters. I'll take you through a little bit more on that uh, right now. So in regard to DSO, um, originally the company was planning to ship, uh, to make six shipments of DSO, three this year, three next year. And we had done that, put those plans together with the support of the previous mines minister. A new mines minister was appointed um, around about four or five weeks ago, I think, from memory. Um, and uh, sorry, a bit, bit long, earlier than that, about two, two months ago. And one of his first um, actions was to stop the DSO. So we have uh, stopped crushing the ore. We're, we're currently still mining and putting ore on the ROM, but we're not crushing it into a DSO-type product. Um, the, uh, the reasons for, for stopping the DSO operation are for us to engage with the government um, and explain the operation in a little bit more detail, uh, provide market commentary, market pricing information, product quality information to the government. The final decision hasn't been yet uh, reached on DSO. There is an opportunity that it will be permitted in the future. But just to point out, the company doesn't need the DSO revenue. One of the key reasons that we wanted to uh, push ahead with DSO was to demonstrate the logistics um, of getting product from mine all the way through to the port in Cote d'Ivoire, which is a thousand kilometre um, distance. So um, if it's not permitted, that's fine. We'll, we will certainly comply with government directions on DSO. Um, one of the other things we were, we were quite happy about with DSO was that it does bring forward revenue into the government uh, six to nine months in advance of revenue that would flow from spodumene production. So these uh, discussions are ongoing, they're incomplete and we'll certainly be providing more information um, as, uh, as it comes to a, a final resolution. We also had some dialogue with the government on the free carry stake. So the government is entitled to take a 10% free carry position in the company. Uh, we've progressed that by issuing uh, the documentation for the government to acquire um, that 10% for free. And the next step is they can also then acquire a subsequent 10% um, at, uh, at a market rate. So those discussions will occur in due course. Uh, one other thing that's changed in recent times is that uh, the project was entitled to exonerations from customs duties and fees. Uh, the government has uh, rescinded this, um, this exoneration and we're now being charged uh, duties and fees on equipment being brought into the country. Um, we, again, are in discussion with the government on that. We haven't received official correspondence and those and the discussion on that matter is also uh, ongoing and unresolved. I'll talk a little bit now about our JV partner, Gang Feng, who remain very supportive of the project. Gang Feng's uh, China's largest lithium chemicals company by production capacity. We have a 50-50 JV with them, uh, where they've uh, supplied uh, equity and debt into the project over the course of the last two years. Um, Gang Feng and Leo struck a deal where Gang Feng was going to invest $106 million Australian into Leo Lithium, and this deal was announced in May of this year. Um, over the last couple of months, we've restructured the deal where they're now going to um, uh, inject equity direct into uh, Gulamina Lithium project through one of the holding companies, and I'll describe that a little bit more on the next, the next slide. The, this restructure of the deal um, has, it, it's a, a restructure of the corporate entities only. It is not, um, we haven't changed the financial metrics at all. It's still the same price, the, sa the same valuation as the deal that was announced in May. 
Associated with this investment agreement from uh, Gang Feng are a range of um, future business opportunities with Leo Lithium. And these include the increase of stage two capacity, uh, up to 500,000 tonnes of spodumene per annum. Also, uh, we're going to study a joint uh, lithium conversion facility where we take the spodumene uh, up to lithium hydroxide, up to 99% um, lithium hydroxide. And we'll study that, the investment, and also hope, hope to move forward to the next stage, and that is actually committing to a uh, lithium hydroxide conversion facility some, to be located outside of China, probably somewhere like North Africa, Europe, or the Middle East. So we've got a wide range of locations that we're looking at jointly. Uh, we'll also toll treat some of the spodumene um, through China, through Gangfeng's facilities in China uh, in the interim before we have the conversion facility up and running. And then finally, the fifth element of the cooperation agreement is we're going to jointly um, explore for lithium in Australia initially, but we'll also look at um, other uh, jurisdictions. So it's a great... Um, a great agreement. We're really happy with it. Gang Feng's happy with how we're operating the plant, uh, the project in, in Mali, and we're re really looking forward to growing our business uh, jointly with Gang Feng in the, in the future. This slide just shows the, um, the pre and post um, government stake in, and how we're structuring the JV. So after Gang Feng complete the investment, they'll move to 55% ownership in Mali Lithium BV, which is the holding vehicle for the, uh, the asset in Mali. And then once the government comes in, they come in at the LMSA level, um, where they will take 10 and then up to 20% in the project um, in, the, in the Mali, um, in the LMSA entity. This is the, uh, the funding bridge, so it's the capital bridge and the funding sources, and it clearly shows that uh, Leo Lithium's in a really solid uh, financial position uh, with, what, with the investment that's coming in from Gang Feng and the capital outlay that's coming up. So starting on the left, we have our um, uh, capital cost of 318 million. If we throw on top of that um, the worst case for additional um, customs duties, it takes our total commitment or total requirement for funding to 368 million US dollars. And then how are we funding that? We're funding that through um, a Gang Feng equity uh, stake initially, a debt facility which we're opening up this week um, and drawing it down this week. It's been opened up for quite a period of time but we're now drawing it down. Um, and then the new sole funding into um, the MLBV entity, which Gang Feng are putting in 137 million US. Ultimately, what it means is right on the far right, what is the requirement for Leo Lithium still to fund through to first product? And it's 27 million US. We have approximately uh, 67 million Australian in our bank accounts at the moment. So that shows you that Leo is funded all the way through to first product. So moving on to um, our ESG practices in building a, a new project in, um, in Mali um, in an area that uh, has very little um, industry at all. It's a great opportunity for us to, to, um, to grow with the local communities and we're doing that in a number of ways. Firstly, just through the obvious one of employment. So with over 1,200 employees, um, on site currently at the moment. We're in a very good shape with 94% of our LMSA employees being Malian and our contractors are at also at a very high level with 88% of their employees being Malian. Obviously in the construction phase you have some really specialist tasks um, where we've had to bring in some uh, expats. Also at the, we're at the early stage of actually building infrastructure in the, pro, in the region um, we've got some moderate projects that are underway, which I'll talk about um, shortly, show you on the next few slides. And over the next 
nine to 12 months, we'll really develop out our community development program. We'll do that with conju in conjunction with local stakeholders, with the, the federal government of Mali, um, to ensure that we're developing infrastructure that the community and the government um, need. A couple of the little projects we have underway at the moment, Mali um, and, and the local region has a lot of malaria, so that's a key area that we can um, direct some of our resources. So we have um, initiated an entomology study to identify the, the, the vectors and select the right antiviral drugs and repellents. We've also kicked off um, mosquito nets um, into the local community, and these were just uh, rolled out over the last uh, few weeks. We've got a few other studies underway. We've got a socioeconomic and health needs assessment study and also an agronomy study to work out um, you know, how we can help the local farmers increase their yields and their productivity. Um, so really good baseline studies now being rolled out so that we can work out our impact over the next few years and also how we can help the communities. Um, some physical infrastructure going in, so we've upgraded some roads. We're building a, a hut for the local um, hunters um, who are a very key part of the uh, community and the liaison with, with the project um, in the region. So a lot of work just getting underway on the community side in, um, in Mali and in Gulamina. So just to conclude, um, our strategy that we've announced over the last year or so has been uh, predominantly focused on stage one, but with this cooperation agreement uh, signed with Gang Feng, we're now tangibly developing our, our near-term growth strategy, and that is to develop and, and grow stage two, to look at downstream conversion of spodumene into lithium hydroxide um, with the partnership of Gang Feng, and now also moving into growth uh, through um, exploration in, uh, in other regions. So Leo remains, even despite the problems with, um, or the issues that we're working through with the government, still remains a very compelling investment when you consider it's the fifth largest um, hard rock spodumene project in the world. We're a near-term producer. We're only nine months away from first spodumene product Funding is secured and we have a, a fantastic JV partner in, uh, in Gang Feng. So thank you very much.